Lisa here. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Um, it is Monday today. I didn't get around to filming uh, my vlog at the weekend, so I've had a super busy weekend. On Saturday, I was at the Handmade Fair, which was lovely, and that's actually what I'm going to be doing this video about today. And on Sunday, I went um, up to my parents' house for a huge family uh, reunion type type thing and it was a big big party which was really really nice as well so I've had a brilliant weekend super busy I've been at work all day today um, settling in our new kids which has been lovely as well and now I'm gonna t chat to you guys about the handmade fest so um, for those of you who don't know and who haven't been following on social media because it's been huge on social media, I have to say. The Handmade Fair is organized by Kirsty Alsop, who, if you're not in the UK, you might have to Google because she's awesome. Uh, she started out making um, TV shows about like renovating your house, no, selling your house, and then she started them about uh, crafts and renovating your home the handmade kind of way, and now she's got this big handmade fair every year at Hampton Court Palace. Um, which is, it's lots and lots of fun. So I went with three friends of mine and we had a really great time. Um, if you want to check out some photos of the day, you can uh, take a look on my Instagram, which I will link down below. It's at Rosabella Angelica. Um, my setup's a bit different today. It looks kind of messy behind me. I do apologize. Um, this is boyfriend's wardrobe and this is very messy coat rack. So yeah, but it's because it's kind of, well, it's dark outside, it's getting dark so early, and this angle had the best light, so I'm really sorry about the messy coat rack. <laughs> we own a lot of denim jackets, it turns out, I'm looking at that like, hmm, <laughs> but never mind. Anyway, so we went to the Handmade Fair, and the first thing that we did when we arrived was kind of scope out the situation and it was enormous it has huge two enormous tents for shopping um which was obviously awesome lots of gorgeous crafty things not all sewing related there was knitting there was crochet there was paints there was you know everything crafty really and then they also had a, a food section where it was all homemade foods like condiments which we enjoyed trying and cakes and fudge and we had some lovely fancy chips and my uh, my cousin who I went with had some really nice paella. So yeah, great food, A plus for the food, handmade fare. Um, the one thing was, it was absolutely bloody freezing on Saturday. It was, at, and I went out, because two days prior it was 30 degrees here in London, you know, wearing a summer dress. It was actually too hot to be like going back to work, you know, it kind of still felt like it should have been summer holidays because um, it was absolutely boiling. But then on the Saturday, it was just so cold and really windy. I wish I'd have worn a proper winter coat. I just wore like a cardigan, one of my knitted kimonos. Well, not one of my knitted kimono, which I think I've shown you before. I just wore that with a little t-shirt, my Agnes t-shirt, Agnes hack t-shirt dress from Tilling the Buttons and a scarf, which I'd knit myself. And yeah, I froze and all of us froze. So I think I didn't buy that much, but I spent a lot of money on tea because I feel like every sort of half an hour or so, we were like, should we have some tea? <laughs> and we sat in the Molly Makes tent and had tea and my friends had an Oreo cupcake, which looked really delicious. And it was really, it was just lovely because it's nice to catch up with, with your friends, obviously, anyway, but also to go out with friends who are all really into crafts. And we all had different crafty backgrounds and different interests. So yeah, that was really, really a pleasure. My one complaint, and it really is only one, because it was, I mean, obviously it was cold, that's no one's fault, um, but it was, the only thing that I would say could have been improved about the day is it was extremely crowded. So, you know, we were in these tents looking around, and the alleys in between the stalls were, the alleys, the aisles, rather, in between the stalls were extremely narrow, and there were some points where I just literally couldn't see anything. Like, I took some photos, which I'll insert into this video, so you can see just a few clips of, uh, some of the great stalls, and I'll leave links back down below to um, some of the, the you know, creative businesses I'm going to chat about. But it was just too busy. I tried to vlog a bit, and I was like, I literally can't make any video because it's just so crowded. Um, and that, not that that really matters, but you know, most people aren't be making video. But it it was too busy to really see things properly. There were some stalls where you just felt like it was so crowded and so busy. You were like, I'm just not going to bother, you know. Um, and that's a real shame, I think. So I think for next year, it, clearly, it was, I mean, it's great how popular it is and it's lovely that the handmade movement is just going so well, but I think they should probably think about um, finding just an, an alternative 
tent like just, well maybe just have three shopping tents and just spread them out a little bit more because if they're going to be crowds that large then you may as well make room for them <laughs> uh, and we, we didn't do any workshops we all the ones that we were interested in seemed to be booked up so that was a bit of a shame but I did some workshops last time and they, anyway, they were really lovely but I'm not you know I, I didn't lose any sleep over it it was fine and the workshops that were going on looked like lots of fun um, so yeah, we, we really just went for, for tea, for food, <laughs> and uh, to look around the, the crafty stalls and the shops. And another really exciting thing which happened was they, uh, we went to the Tilly and the Buttons stand, and I think it's released today. I'm saying today because I'm going to be putting this video up on Tuesday, I need to edit it and stuff before I release it. And the, the, the Rosa dress pattern launched. Ta da! So that was really exciting. I think it was a bit of a preview um, kind of at the fair, like a special, special exciting deal, which they had released also to subscribers. So if you subscribe to the Tilly and the Buttons newsletter, it's an email newsletter, it doesn't come that often. So you know, if you don't like loads of email, it's not too bad. And it's really great because you always get to see the patterns, the new patterns about a week early. So this came out to subscribers uh, last week, which is really cool. But it also was at the fair, so lots of people buying it, and I had my picture taken with it, which was exciting, because again, for those of you who don't know, I did some modelling for Tilly, and I modelled the marigold play suit, jumpsuit, sorry, jumpsuit, and also the button back blouse, we took some photos for that, back in May, and the third item which I modelled, and they were all on the same day, we had a really busy day, it was, you know, it was a real, like, just jam-packed day, it was really fun though. Um, and the last thing I modelled was the shirt dress, which turns out is called the Rosa dress, which is really lovely. Um, I didn't know that it was going to be called that until like a week before it was released, so it was a really lovely surprise. And yes, I went and saw the Rosa dress on the stand, which was really cool as well. So let me show you some of the bits which I picked up. I've got, I didn't, as I said, I didn't buy a huge amount. The first thing I bought was this gorgeous chevron jersey. This is not for me. This is to make some sleeves for my boyfriend's t-shirts because I think I said I was looking for some chevron jersey in my last video. I'm going to be making my boyfriend some tees because even when it's cold, you know, you still want to wear a t-shirt with other stuff as well. So I'm going to be making a white t-shirt with some cool chevron sleeves, which I think should look kind of cool. This was £10 per metre, but I only bought half a metre, so it was only £5. And I bought it from, I've got a stack of... Uh, different leaflets and things here. I bought this from Girl Charlie, which is a, it's a British company. I can't find the leaflet from, oh, I do have their bag though. They gave out these little bags for free, which was very nice. So here's my, uh, my little bag for life, my Girl Charlie bag for life. Again, I'll link their website down below. They have an awesome selection of jerseys. So I think that's the only thing they sell. They're a jersey company. They're called Girl Charlie. They're really cool. So pretty pleased with this one. The next item I bought was very boring. I bought an unpicker, but it's a giant one. Look how big that is. Like it's much bigger than the ones you get free with your machine. This was two pounds and I have to be honest with you, I cannot remember who I bought it from because it was this, it was the sort of a store with just lots of little bits like this, haberdashery type things. Is this, does this count as haberdashery? It doesn't really, does it? But this kind of stuff like pins and needles and unpickers. So I bought this one because I had lost mine and it was driving me nuts. Every time I did something wrong, I, I kept forgetting I didn't have an unpicker and having to do it all with a pin. Just really annoying. So I got that. That was two quid. <laughs> nice little little purchase. Want something to remember the fair by. And as it's so big, I feel like I'm somehow less likely to lose it. Maybe. Uh, the next thing I bought wasn't actually a sewing-related purchase. It's this lovely print, which is by Zena, Zena Shah who it has just gorgeous, gorgeous things on her stall. Lots of beautiful prints. So she's a printmaker. And I've got her, she has these lovely cut little um, postcards. This is, this is her hands, I think, <laughs> doing some printing in her apron. And it says, print design, workshop tutor, illustrator, homewares, and author. So yeah, she does loads of cool stuff. She makes coloring books with her illustrations. And it says at the end, find us at the Handmade Fat. So that's where I found her. And I bought this print, and it's it's, a, it's only 15 of them made, which is quite lovely. I need to get a frame for it. I just think it's really pretty. And it was only £5, which seems just so, so, yeah, really, really, really affordable for something that was so, so pretty. So, yeah, I would have I paid more because it's just absolutely lovely. 
and it's very girly and it'll definitely put a smile on my face. I mean, as you know, this room is pink and green, so I'm imagining it up in here, probably by my side of the bed, because it's kind of girly, maybe a bit too girly for, to have above my boyfriend's head as he sleeps. So yeah, I'll find somewhere near my side of the bed for that. And the last purchase is probably the one I'm most excited about, although I'm excited about all of them. It is the Pauline Alice Churia, am I saying that right? Churia dungarees sewing pattern. I have wanted to make dungarees for ages. I bought a quick sew pattern, I think last winter, and made the, made, well, got halfway through making a pair and it was an absolute disaster. And I was just, I couldn't even finish them. They were like this wide, they were like clown trousers. And it was extremely disheartening, as you can imagine. So I didn't attempt it again. I had a go at a hack this year, didn't quite, uh, you know, didn't quite work out. So this is gonna be third time lucky. I'm hoping, anyway. So these are Pauline Alice. I've never used a Pauline Alice pat and L. I've never used a Pauline Alice pattern before, um, but I, I, I've heard very good things. I, um, I always, before I buy any pattern, Google image it, because I, I find that it's the best way to see what that pattern's actually going to look like. And this looks gorgeous in all of the versions all the bloggers have made. It looks fairly simple to be honest with you. It, does, it has uh, little pockets on the bottom. Let me show you the close up here. So you could do them as shorts or you can do them as trousers. Um, so short, short dungarees or, or dungarees with trousers. So yeah, I'm really excited to give these a go. I think they're gonna, this is gonna be, I just stabbed myself in the throat. That was really silly. Um, <laughs> so I'm quite tired, it's been a long day. Sorry guys. Um, so yeah, I'm, I really wanted to show you these things. I was like, I don't wanna wait till next weekend because you know, the excitement of the fair, I've forgotten something. Yeah, anyway, um, and yeah, the, I'm really excited to give these a go. It'll probably be in my October haul video. I have already got some denim for them because I'm very keen <laughs> to make these up. So yeah, I will be sharing that with you in the October video. And I think these are gonna get sewn up very quickly because I'm super duper excited. There's a couple more business cards from companies which I just thought were really lovely. This is a gorgeous one, look at that. Cloth and candy, gorgeous fabrics. I've already shown you the Xena Shah cards, really cool. Uh, the Eternal Maker is where I got the Pauline Alice pattern from and their store was awesome. Always, I'll get, I'll link all these people down below. Oh yeah, I'm really tempted. I don't know if any of you guys have tried them before, but Gather, Gather Patterns had a gorgeous stall and their, all the illustrations on their patterns, everything was just, yeah, super pretty. And this one I really liked, it's called the Az, Azair. Yeah, I think you would pronounce that as there. It's got that air sound in the middle. It's just gorgeous. And it, it, you can make it as a dress and a top. And I'm really into my frills and that kind of business at the moment. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty tempted by this one. And ooh, you know what else was quite good? They gave out some discounts. So if I want to order it, I can do that and get 10% off. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Ooh, tempted there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what else haven't I shown you yet? Oh yes, this is, looks really cool. The London Craft Club. So you can go along and they do all different workshops. So I will, again, link them down below, but really, really lovely program. Sadly, I think this should have some details in it if it was, I don't know, if it was, it just seems logical. I was hoping that I picked this up and got it home and I thought, oh, there'll be information inside on what courses they have. But she doesn't have the course schedule in here. So I guess this is something that they produce and it has to be, has more longevity if they don't put the dates in, I guess. But we looked at their timetable and it looked really, really interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna be having a look. And some of them are free. There's like free evenings where you just turn up with your crafty project and you get to sit around and chat and drink tea with other, other crafty people. So yeah, I thought that sounded kind of cool. Anyway, that is everything for today, guys. Please let me know down below if you were at the Handmade Fair. Um, and if you were at the Handmade Fair, uh, did you get anything lovely? <laughs> did you do any workshops, buy anything lovely, find out about any cool brands that you didn't know about? We can chat about that down below. Anyway, that's everything for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye.